Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for joining this Year of Votes Fireside Chat. I am Justin J. Pearson, our national campaign lead, and it has been my pleasure to do this work for almost two months now, up, uh, to and through the election. I serve as special assistant to the CEO of Year Up, and I am so glad and we are so happy to have uh, Congresswoman Nanette Berrigan with us today. Uh, I have a, a bio which is extensively wonderful, uh, and I want to just share a little bit of it. Uh, but the Congresswoman represents California's 44th Congressional District, uh, was born in Harbor City, uh, and growing up in surrounding communities, is the youngest of 11 children raised by immigrant parents from Mexico, has had a lifelong commitment to advocacy and justice, especially uh, at the national level, representing neighbors and friends and family members uh, as a person who is in Congress. In the 115th class, uh, uh, congressional class, the Congresswoman was elected by her peers to serve as freshman class president, uh, as well as regional whip. And so I thought that was uh, fantastic. And we were just so fortunate uh, to have you here to talk a little bit about the importance of voting uh, and engaging in this election. Well, thank you for having me. Um, honored to be here. Always great to have a conversation about the importance of voting and why all people should be engaged in, especially our young people. Uh, so looking forward to the conversation. Wonderful. Well, to your point, let's just get started. Uh, year Up has served 18 to 24 year olds over the last 20 years, uh, over 30,000 uh, young people who have moved from low income or minimum wage jobs into careers at some of the nation's largest, uh, biggest companies. So you think about Google and Salesforce, JP Morgan and Bank of America. Uh, and one of the things that we believe in is the closing of what we call the opportunity divide. It's that lack of access to opportunity, particularly in communities of color, especially in lower income communities that we need to close, not just continue to create bridges over. And one of the ways that we think about that is through engaging people civically. And so can you talk to us a little bit about uh, the importance of engaging civically in this moment, especially, uh, and getting young people engaged in voting uh, on November 3rd and before? Well, the bottom line is your voice matters. And each of us has a very unique role in this moment, right? And one of these days we will look back and we'll say, what were you doing when? And mm -hmm. we wanna be able to tell people we were out there, we were engaged, we were involved. And in some cases that means volunteering with an organization. Uh, maybe it's giving back to our community. Maybe it's uh, making sure that you're voting. And in some cases we have some family members like when I was growing up, my parents were immigrants and uh, they became citizens and they had a hard time figuring out who to vote for and what the proposition stood for, especially when you're in states like California where there's a lot of propositions. Sometimes it took our young people, which was me, to explain to our parents what they were or where they had to go vote. And so only you know your community and there is at least one person uh, that you um, are alone, are able to reach and that's you. And so let's ask yourself, what are you going to do to reach out to others and what are you gonna do to make that difference? Um, it's also something about the ability to, uh, when you're part of a group or you're volunteering, it's that networking opportunities. You talk about getting those jobs and moving ahead, right? Maybe it's through a volunteer opportunity you're going to, or a get out the vote opportunity you're going to, that's going to uh, connect you with somebody that you may not know who can help you down the line, maybe get that job or give you a recommendation. Um, but right now we're in a critical, critical time with voting happening as we speak, record-breaking voting across the country. Um, so it's really about making a plan for yourself, making a plan for your family, and then making a plan to help others, right? And work out logistics on how they're going to vote, um, whether it is uh, doing it by mail, doing it in person. Mm -hmm. And so um, just, you know, elections are critically important, right? And they are what... Uh, they are, they are how we pick people who value what we value. Yes. And, uh, and so this is, a, this is a chance right now to get out there and be engaged. I, I, I love that. Uh, we pick people who value what we value. And right now we're, we're at, a, at a crossroads, but we're at a really interesting moment in our nation's history where we are deciding uh, what type of values we want to have. And so we are at a really interesting time in our nation's history where we're deciding what, what does it mean to create community, to build community, to be a part of community. And we're seeing this uh, with the increase uh, in activism 
for the Black Lives Matter movement. We're seeing this uh, as Spice for 15 continue to increase. And we are seeing it, and honestly, the not so great uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic that we are in, right? Where it looks like we're valuing certain people's lives more than other folks. So how do you, when you're talking to people, when you're out there, uh, uh, how are you in reminding people and ensuring them that their vote, voice and their vote actually has an impact on the type of values that we want to see in our country? Well, you know, you mentioned that our, our young people, the groundswell of, uh, from our young people and activists in the fight for racial justice has been inspiring. It's fantastic. And I think it helps push the agenda. It helps put pressure certainly on elected officials and calling for and making sure we can achieve that real change. Um, but we need more than the marches, right? We need more than coming out. And that is that that's where you are engaging in the political process to voting for those who are going to fight for the things that you believe in. They're going to make sure to carry out the ability to get that justice that we need, that racial justice that we still um, haven't reached our, our full potential yet. When you think about uh, the civil rights movement, right? That was the start of equality. That was the start of the right to vote. That was the start of, of having, um, putting an end to the discrimination and the hate that we see. Yet we have seen it pop um, up to some degree at, at, a, at a level that has been unprecedented. And so um, this movement uh, for Black Lives Matter and racial justice will only be successful if we're using all of the tools in the toolbox, yeah. as I like to say. So we need to march and petition, um, but it's really to elect leaders who value and are listening, right? Because yeah. if, if, if elected officials are not listening to those marching, then we're not going to get that change that we need. And uh, we saw that happen in Congress with the um, George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, right? There mm -hmm. was a response. Now the problem, mm -hmm. of course, is there was a response only on one side of that mm -hmm. chamber and not on the other side. Mm -hmm. And so then that asks, you know, begs the question, you know, do we want to keep the same people in the Senate? Do we want to um, make sure we're electing people who are going to move that bill? Or maybe it's another issue, but it's really making sure we're electing uh, officials who share values. And mm -hmm. again, it's, it's so frustrating when you see the marches and then you don't see the equal voting at the polls. Right which right. is where, where it really makes a huge difference. Right, we wanna march in the streets and protests and we've had thousands of people in our company and thousands of young adults uh, who we serve who've been out there over the summer. And it's also the importance of marching to the polls. And so I, uh, we are 100% in alignment there. Now you are an elected official. You sit in the US House of Representatives. Uh, when you talk about getting your citizenry, the people in uh, the congressional, the 44th congressional district, the folks who are encompassing that community engaged and involved. What does it look like for the public to continue to put pressure on elected officials, right? Like what do you really respond to? Uh, and, and what can we as people who are really committed to social, economic, racial justice do uh, when oftentimes it feels like politics is uh, maybe not for us, or it, it, we aren't really able to make a big difference. Right. Well, first of all, you know, there are people who may not want to run for elected office is different than you're a constituent, you have a voice, and you matter to your elected official. And so the most powerful thing you can do is reaching out to your own elected official um, who represents you and sharing your story or why you believe in something, because at the end of the day, that elected official is accountable to you and should be mm -hmm. listening to you and what you believe in, right? But then we also know that when we mobilize across the country and we're able to get people in different parts of the country, red parts and blue parts, and realize you know, that together we can get change, um, that has a much bigger impact across Congress to act. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that's what we saw, right? We saw the marching on the streets after the George Floyd um, really the murder of George Floyd. Right. And, and you saw even Republicans say, well, we we'll want to do something. Now, we didn't agree on how far it should go. And, um, and it, that's kind of one of, the, where, one of the areas where it got hung up on. Mm -hmm. um, but so first, so that's, I think, the most critically important persuasive is when you're a, a constituent and you call and say, I'm a constituent and I want to set up a meeting with this elected official. Mm -hmm. um, but then we also have to make sure that everybody has access and the right to vote. 
right? right. We still have states that are making it harder for people to vote. Uh, putting in requirements, cutting off early voting at certain times, mm -hmm. saying there's only one drop box in a location, right? right? That is a way to suppress the vote. It makes no sense. Why wouldn't right. we want to make sure everybody has access to vote in the easy way possible, right? right. And so um, that means we still have a fight to do. And so make a plan. And this is where it's really important. Don't wait for the last minute. Don't wait for the last day, right? You could get sick on the last day. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe you get the, maybe you get a cold, maybe you're, you're not feeling well. So uh, try to make a plan to see if we can get out the vote as quickly as we can early and early voting. Um, and, you know, we're also seeing longer lines um, greater than ever. So mm -hmm. there is an ability for people, especially uh, in some places you can curbside vote and other places you can walk in your ballot and you don't have to wait in that line. And so mm -hmm. it's really uh, making sure we're exercising that right to vote that so many fought so hard. And as I say that I'm thinking about my, uh, my colleague, um, the late John Lewis, right? Yeah. Who marched across the bridge, the Edmund Pettus Bridge for this right to vote. Uh, yeah. So let's exercise it and let's make sure our voices are being heard. Yeah, thank you so much, first of all, for that. Uh, it is so important to hear that even though there is resistance and even though it may be difficult that if we plan and if we continue to uh, push to exercise our right and elevate our voices, in uh, holding people accountable, elected officials accountable, as well as uh, uh, holding them accountable at the ballot box, right, is a part of the work uh, and the benefit of being a constituent. Uh, and so I, I really just like, uh, before we wrap up here, to hear what is, what is the vision of that America, right? One where you have access and, and the barriers reduced to voting and engaging civically, uh, and you actually are able to get the pluralistic society's perspective on what the country could be. How do you sort of project that? What, what would that look like uh, to you and as a mode to continue to revitalize and encourage people who may be having uh, voted yet or just a few days away from the election uh, to help make real what that vision could be? Right, well, you know, I envision one day where we are gonna have clean air and clean water or making real progress and being bold about it. I envision a day where we're gonna be united and not divided and that we're gonna have somebody leading in that effort to bring us together um, to have equity and equal pay and equal rights and, the, and, and any discrimination. And you know, it's a long road. Um, but the way we do that is we need to start by electing the leaders to share our values who believe in those same vision and outcome in the long term. Um, but we also, as a citizenry, have to do our part, right? We also have to make sure we're voting. We have to make sure we fill out the census. Now we just finished the census. Right. Um, and this is where your community doesn't get its fair share of money if you didn't fill out the census because we don't have an accurate count, right? right? And there's an example of where you had a political, uh, the, the census was really politicized and mm -hmm. it was supposed to go to the end of October and then there was right. a court battle and it got cut short and then it got extended to the 15th, causing a lot of confusion. We've seen um, districts really are gonna suffer from it and so is representation. Um, and so apart from voting, it's making sure our communities are turning out um, because at the end of the day, we're gonna shape policy. And mm -hmm. the reality is our young people are the future leaders of this country, right? So all of you who are watching, who are engaged, who are active now, you're the ones gonna be running for office and you should be thinking of running for office because we want you at the table to shape that policy, the perspective, and so that, that, that future that we want, you can make sure we're going down that path to get there. And so um, I just continue to encourage you to reach out to your elected officials, volunteer, reach out to your family, reach out to your friends, and, and then run, right? Run for that vision that you want to see and to make sure that your values are at the table and your perspective and diversity that we need. Right. And so don't be fooled. We have a lot of lawyers in Congress, but guess what? We need scientists. We need business people. Yes. We need doctors. We need women. Right. We need uh, just we want Congress to look like America. And on yeah. one side of the aisle, it's looking a little more like America. Um, but we really got to continue to push that. Um, and so just to, now with the election just days away is the time to get engaged, get involved, build that network. And, uh, and we'll see how things go. And hopefully it's we'll have something very hopeful um, 
to keep um, to wake up to really the day after election day. Congresswoman, I want to personally uh, truly thank you for this motivation and inspiration. Uh, it is uh, so good to see you, uh, to learn and listen uh, uh, to you speak about the need to engage uh, the work that we can do as constituents, and hopefully we get some more people who run for office uh, and make history as you have been making it. Uh, the Year of Votes campaign has been uh, an honor to be a part of and to help lead, uh, and your voice is adding to uh, a wonderful chorus of people who are trying to create change in our country. And so uh, thank you so very much, and we look forward to being in touch with you soon. Well, thank you for your leadership, and thank you to all those watching. Stay safe, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.